Absolutely delighted now to be joined by uh, Karen Pinkos, who, as you know, is the incoming president-elect of the ICMA. Well, Karen, first of all, welcome. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful sunny day yes. in San Antonio. Yes. So you're starting off uh, as president-elect. What, what are you hoping to achieve over the next two years? <laughs> over the next couple of years? Well, the first year as president-elect, I want to support uh, David Johnstone and his year as president and what his priorities are. I have some of the priorities that I've sort of identified as, as what I are important to me or what I think is important to ICMA, but also keeping in mind that, you know, sort of over the next year, some things sometimes, some challenges happen or things pop up that we might need to change a focus on. So some of the priorities I'm interested in are trying to help build resilient communities and focusing on you know, what ICMA can do for its members, whether it's a natural disaster or some sort of financial event or, you know, all sorts of things that happen that impact our quality of life and how we as members and we as, as leaders in our communities can help, you know, meet the challenges uh, that, are, that face us. Another thing that I'm interested in continuing to have the conversation about diversity and inclusion right. in the profession, um, in our organizations, in our membership, on the ICMA executive board. Um, I'm only the third assistant manager to ever serve and only the fourth woman in 105 presidents. Right. So, you know, our track record needs to continue okay. getting better and so how we can continue to promote women and people of color in the profession and, and, and make sure that people know that they're leaders at every level and that we want to build everybody up. We live in, let's say, as the Chinese would have put it, interesting times. <laughs> yes. What do you think the role of local government is uh, in the 21st century? I'm not the first one to say this or observe this, but local government is the government that people trust the most. I mean, all this, there's many studies and surveys that have shown that, but also we have the greatest amount of impact on people. And so we have the greatest opportunity to be able to continue to build that trust and continue to build the community. Um, I think that our interesting times has also unfortunately given a lot of people some permission to be a little nastier and a little right. bit more confrontational than we've seen and certainly I've seen throughout my career and so you know again talking about resilience and talking about how to build those skills I think that 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 is something that we can continue to work on and continue to focus on and how we can foster our sense of community to be able to come together and do what we can at the local level that maybe isn't happening at the state level or even federal level. Um, and I'm not even just talking about you know some of the operations or services we provide, but that real sense of community, that real sense of, of safety for some people, of belonging and of being able to foster that that sense of quality of life that, that we're good at doing and kind of you know making sure that local government is there for people. Well, look, Karen, thank you ever so much indeed for talking to us. That's fantastic. And we look thank forward you. to catching up with you next year to see how the year's gone. Oh, and you'll <laughs> have to check in on what I'm doing. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.